do these inseparable components talk to one another? What language do they speak? Candace Perk, a neuroscientist formerly with the National Institute of Mental Health, has mapped the chemicals which she believes may carry the messages, the neuropeptides. Now, what is a neuropeptide? Peptides are strings of amino acids uh, strung together very much like pearls uh, strung along in, in a necklace. And a neuropeptide is a peptide that was first found in the brain, but then later on, we found that they were everywhere, and that these molecules are being released from one place. They're diffusing, they're binding, and they're uh, tickling these receptors that are on the surface of cells. Every cell in your body is encrusted with receptors of various types like a satellite dish that's receiving a, a signal. Facing outward like a satellite dish and receiving, putting out their little antenna and receiving what's coming in. Everything in your body as it's running is being run by these messenger molecules. What do you mean by that? Well, the cells have to talk to each other, otherwise the whole organism can't hang together. And the cells have to talk. Now, I guess you're going to ask me what they talk about. Yeah, I was just <laughs> going to ask you, what do they talk about? It might just be make a little more of this protein or make a little less of, the, of that protein or these cells stop dividing because we've got to put our energy into digestion. In a way, one way to think of uh, the neuropeptides as we've come to think of them is directing where the body should pay attention, where the body should put its energy. Lay down and relax so you can digest your food, man, or you're going to die. That kind of message. But, but of course, on a cellular level, There's hundreds of scientists who have mapped where these molecules are and found them in the various parts of the body. After years of studying these various peptides and studying how they were distributed and their characteristics, we came to hypothesize that these were the biochemicals of emotion. Biochemicals? The biochemicals of emotion. We were nervous to call them that, and it took us 15 years of research before we dared to call them that, but they were found in the parts of the brain that mediated emotion. They control uh, the opening and closing of your blood vessels in your face and the flushes of emotion. They get released during various kinds of emotional states. We wanted to make some kind of sense out of all of this data. Are you saying that the mind talks to the body, so to speak, through these neuropeptides? Um, why are you making the mind outside of the body? That's the way I was raised. Yeah, that's because you're part of Western civilization. I mean, I was taught that the mind is somehow distinct from the body. It's something in here, uh, in the in the brain. Well, that just all goes back to a, a turf deal that got that Descartes made with the Roman Catholic Church, <laughs> and he got to study science as we know it, and left the soul and the mind and consciousness and emotions in the other realm. That was the realm of the church. Remember, I'm a scientist in the Western tradition, and I don't use the word spirit. I'm not allowed, you know, soul is a four-letter word in our tradition. You know, the deal was struck with Descartes. We don't invoke that stuff. The brain is talking to me unconsciously, I mean, or instantly, through this reaction in the receptor. The me that you say is me, you're still thinking it's your brain. The me that's you is your whole body. So that the intelligence is... It's the wisdom of the body. The intelligence is in every cell of your body. The mind is not confined to the space above the neck. The mind is throughout the brain and body. <laughs>